Computers have undergone a considerable evolution, but in far less time. A lot's changed, obviously size for one thing. Today's desktop PC is far more powerful than people would have dreamed of just 10 years ago. Presentation is everything. There you have it. A genuinely easy to use computer that is a major breakthrough for business. I really hope that you enjoyed that B-roll of this PC build. And I'll be going over some of my struggles, some of the things that I came across throughout this PC build. So the first thing is that this case is really, really easy to build in because it has a AIO liquid cooler already built in. It comes with a 650 watt power unit, which is already cabled managed for you. All you literally have to do is plug in the headers into the motherboard and your components into the motherboard and you're pretty much set up. Though the one issue I ran into was with the AIO cooler, I tightened the knobs uh, a bit too much on, on the brackets and I couldn't mount it on either of the uh, AM4 socket brackets. And uh, The thermal paste stuck onto the CPU and I tried to wiggle it and lift it up and the CPU came out with the uh, cooler and I freaked out and almost thought I'd ruin the pins on the CPU, but it worked. This actually does turn on. I, I'll definitely be going through some benchmarks and tests, but. I just reseated the CPU and uh, everything seemed to be fine after that. Initially, I turned it on. I also misplugged one of the PCIe uh, graphics power supply um, inputs. So I, I realized that you have to, you get, there's one that's three and then worth the, there's one that is two, uh, the pins. So you have to put them together to make four pins. And I'd misplaced uh, one of those pins uh, when I was plugging in the graphic unit. So gave me the error when I booted up, uh, when I was connected to the screen, but other than that, it, uh, it, it booted up. Now, I haven't run any thermals, I haven't done any benchmarking yet. I will be doing that shortly, uh, hopefully within the next week. I, I don't know what software really to use besides Geekbench and uh, Cinebench R20 or and Blender maybe, so we'll see what thermals look like, we'll see what performance looks like, and Hopefully this doesn't run too hot when I'm video editing and, you know, maybe gaming. I don't know. I don't plan on gaming on it. I say that now, but I said that about RGB and I realized that this motherboard, the B550 uh, AX Pro ITX motherboard has like one strip of RGB and I think I spent like 20 minutes on Amazon trying to find other RGB lights that I might want to add to this build. I am running Windows on this computer. Don't worry, I know Linux, you guys exist out there and you're not forgotten. You're good for great stuff, but I will be using Windows on this computer. I created a bootable drive on this, this USB right here. And when I plugged it in to the motherboard after the post, um, it recognized it booted right to the motherboard instead of the NVMe. So. I guess that was nice. I was expecting to smash the delete key and get into the BIOS and set the boot drive to the bootable Windows, but I didn't have to do that. I did install Windows offline, so I didn't have to create a Microsoft account. And that's one tip if you guys don't want to deal with Microsoft uh, forcing you to create an account when you install Windows, do it offline, not connected to the internet. My Windows code didn't work, I guess, because I wasn't connected to the internet, but when I did connect the Windows key worked and it verified and everything, it seemed to be working smoothly. Windows loaded, I got in and I had I, I have another hard drive in here, the uh, one terabyte Crucial MX500, pretty affordable uh, SATA SSD, but Windows was not recognizing it and I wasn't sure why. I went out, back out into the BIOS, the BIOS recognized it, the OS didn't recognize 
the hard drive. Best thing to do, probably connect to the internet, get some drivers and see if that works. Connect to the internet, got the drivers, formatted the hard drive, it's connected, it works, it's great. You, mu you might notice that with maybe the Crucial MX500 or another hard drive you guys put into um, a case. You may not detect it, you might have to get drivers for it. Then what I did was I installed all the relevant drivers for my components. I also updated the motherboards drivers as well. That gives you a bunch of software when you go to your manufacturer's website so that your motherboard can stay up to date and perform um, at its best. Since I do have two drives in here, an NVMe SSD, which the Windows operating system is on, and the um, SATA SSD, which I'll be using for things like footage, maybe games and other project files. Um, it's a good idea to keep things separate just because if you need to reinstall or wipe windows, you don't have to worry about losing your data or having to worry about backing up that data as well. I went ahead and I also installed some of my favorite apps that I'll be using to create some of my content. So that's Premiere Pro and After Effects, uh, as well as DaVinci Resolve, which I will fully be switching to uh, as I learn how to use it and become more efficient at it. And a lot of people might think, you know, what's the, what's the situation like between PC and Mac? And are you gonna live in this hybrid world? Are you gonna go completely to PC? Or are you, are you gonna still use your MacBook and um, use Apple devices? For me personally, I think it's possible to live in a hybrid system just because of cloud computing and cloud storage. I have a Dropbox, which I can upload footage files, project files to and pull down from the cloud on either this or my MacBook and I can have sort of a dichotomy between PC and Mac, which is nice. Uh, I do have a RAID drive that is formatted for the Apple file system, meaning that it can't be read by this, which is unfortunate. And I don't want to use FAT32 or XFAT because they aren't as stable and there's some limitations uh, based on uh, those formatted uh, drive types. So the nice thing is that I can insert an SD card, which I still use. I don't have any cameras that do CFast media, so I'll be using an SD card and I can upload to the RAID drive if I want, or I can offload to the RAID drive and it'll copy it twice because it's set in RAID 1. And then I can take that footage and upload it to Dropbox and I can pull it down to here, put it on that crucial drive, which is my footage drive and edit off of that very seamlessly with a much easier experience than the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro will probably be my like daily driver that I need for word processing, documents, you know, photo editing is still great for using Lightroom. Um, and I also have a lot of my presets and templates and Lightroom and InDesign and uh, Illustrator already on there. So I may not switch for that type of work, but for 3D rendering, After Effects, uh, video editing will all be on this machine. Um, eventually, with the MacBook Pro, I, I can see myself in a hybrid system where I could up, update or upgrade the MacBook to an iPad Pro. You know, there's a lot of benefits to the iPad Pro where you can edit photos pretty seamlessly, you can upload that to Dropbox, and you can share those files to your clients, no problem. And the nice thing is when some of us photographers are on shoots, we can do remote tethering and we can send that to our iPads, do edits on the spot or on the job site, upload that to you know uh, the Dropbox and share that with your client then and there. So you know with the Apple world, the portability with some of these devices is there and, and there's, there's definitely a spot for them, I think, in my workflow, um, but we'll see. So that's sort of my take on the whole Mac PC hybrid situation that I think I see myself living in. Um, but let me know your thoughts if, if you're completely PC or you are completely Apple and Mac or if you're sort of a meld between the two. I will be doing benchmarks, I will be doing performance um, testing and thermals and all that good stuff and I'll let you guys know how this case uh, does just because it, it is small form factor. So you're likely gonna get some elevated temperatures in such a small um, package, but hopefully with the liquid cooling and the fans on the graphics cards, it'll perform well. And I also do plan on painting it. I didn't wanna paint it just yet, only because um, it may avoid the warranty if something was wrong with the case or the pump. So I waited till everything booted up. And I think I will definitely paint the top or the back panel even red 
to match some of the other accessories. So this has been a quick overview after the build and I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys when I do the benchmarks and some of my other reviews with all my PC components. See ya.